When Carly learned that Jason Morgan had turned himself in at the PCPD, she tried to reach him, but John Jagger seems to be a major obstacle. Naturally, no one wants to let their best friend suffer unjustly, Carly too. She asks for help from Alexis Davis, whose qualifications and legal knowledge are no less than those of Diane Miller. You may remember that Alexis helped Drew Kane escape from Pentonville earlier than his sentence. So, Carly has high hopes that the female lawyer will bring victory to Jason. Unfortunately, things aren't that easy, especially now that there's so much evidence against him. John has many secrets, and he is still using Danny's father as his pawn. We don't know what his next step is, but one thing's for sure, he won't let Jason out of trouble easily. Regardless, Carly and Alexis will work to get him out of jail. The trial of the man who allegedly shot at Dante begins. Anna believes him, but she still doesn't know how to clear his name. Of the dramatic storylines that writers often bring, perhaps Mr. Morgan, will be sentenced to many years in prison to the surprise of many people. Sonny still hasn't given up his skepticism for his best friend. The truth is that his son was seriously injured, and the clues all pointed to Jason's name, General Hospital. Spoilers suggest that Danny's father will be cleared of the charges if Dante wakes up and tells the whole truth. Speaking of Dante, the good news is that he shows signs of awakening. The doctor sees that his hand has moved and reported this news to his relatives. That makes Sam have more hope for his lover's recovery. Ironically, according to some recently spread rumors, Sonny's son has amnesia, which meant he couldn't remember anything about Jason's intervention last week. Yeah, Nina is not a woman who easily gives up what she wants. At Drew's invitation, she will return to take over as Crimson's editor-in-chief. Additionally, she will be determined to reconcile with Sonny and again. Let's see if she gets the results she expected.